everyone, this is Sally with The Polka Dot Life. I am so glad that you have stopped by my channel today. Today we are going to be unpacking our paper pumpkin kit. And I held it until after Christmas because I just knew all of you would be busy. I was busy with my family. And so I thought it would be best to wait until after the Christmas holiday was over. I wanted to take a minute and send my blessings to you and your family. I hope that you had a great Christmas and I pray that your 2021 will be full of health, happiness, and joy. I will be honest with you, this paper pumpkin kit, very comforting, is not my favorite. I like the colors that are in it. I don't dislike a lot of the elements that are in it. If I were not a demonstrator, I would have probably used my option to go into paperpumpkin.com and just click that I could skip this month. My kits would resume then in January. That's how that would have worked. I didn't love this month's kit because it seemed juvenile to me. But another reason for me wanting to do this video is that I wanted to tell you even if you don't love everything about a kit, you can take it and it can be a spark of creativity for you and you can just run with it and make it your own. We also have some things to talk about. There was an announcement over that time period right before Christmas that unfortunately one of our suppliers has had to close down due to the pandemic. They manufactured our Whisper Light products. Of course, Stampin' Up! was quick to just jump right in and have replacement ideas on the ready. However, those items just aren't through the manufacturing process just yet. So you will notice that the Whisper White products are disappearing from our website. We do not know when the basic white new products will be available. Keep in mind that we have our very vanilla products and they make a great starting point for your creating. Let's flip the camera down and unpack this kit together. Okay, here is our kit. Let's get this shrink wrap off so we can see what's inside. Okay, here we go. Paper Pumpkin by Stampin' Up. They always have such happy boxes. I got some new lights for Christmas. I'm not really sure how to use them, so if it seems a little darker or there's some shadows, I'm still figuring all of that out. Okay, our Stampin' Spot is Rich Razzleberry, and that is a really pretty color. I am not one that... I kind of, it's not that I dislike them. I tend to not gravitate toward our jewel tone colors, but they are really nice. Let's see. Let's maybe put this on here to show you. We have a bear stamp, some leaves. Um, let's put it this way. Get well soon, some flowers. You are on my mind, hooray. So nice generic sentiments. Um, I like this. That's one thing I like about building my arsenal of sentiments using my paper pumpkin stamps. So these are just some pictures of our Artistry Blooms products and our new stamp and cut and emboss machine. Pretty tissue as always. Let's take that out of the way, move our box. And let's just pop into all of our goodies. If we do not have a cat appear randomly on my video today, I will be very surprised. Okay, we have full-size dimensionals. We have some die cuts of little animals. We have a bear, 
a raccoon, some koalas. The envelopes are very pretty. I'm guessing this is probably soft sea foam and a very nice striped pattern. We'll be able to use that. Next, we have some card bases in that rich Razzleberry with some gold leaves and some swirls etched in the background, kind of etched effect. They're not actually etched. So these are full-size cards, so that's nice. We have some die cuts, some rectangles, and some striped circles. Those will be great to work with. I may be changing my mind on this kit. They're actually very pretty. So these are rich razzleberry stripes, but there are some gold stripes. And then the soft sea foam backs. We have some square die cuts. Um, I'm anxious to see what, I think this is probably Calypso Coral. We have some round tags, sentiment tags, and some different rectangle ones. And then we also have some die cuts of gifts and flowers, cupcakes, and hearts. And then each one of them have a little bit of gold to them. Here is our instruction sheet. And it shows the cards as they were intended. And I think the premise of these is really great. We always need to have these encouraging cards. You've been on my mind. Get well soon. Congratulations in our arsenal. We need to have those already made up and ready so that when the occasion comes up that we have one to send out quickly. I don't always have one ready. And I am that is one of my goals for 2021 is to have some more of those types of cards on the ready. Drop me a comment below and let me know if you have any 2021 card making goals that you would like to accomplish. So these are our instructions to make them as we can. Of course, we like to take the supplies and turn them into our own designs. And here's a ruler if you should need one. There aren't any um, ribbons in this one. I don't, I didn't see, no. So we don't probably need that ruler. Let's see. Okay, coordinating colors. Basic gray, Calypso coral, cinnamon cider, daffodil delight, rich raspberry, soft sea foam, and white. I love how it shows us over here that you can always visit this website and find out what of products in our other line will coordinate back to these products and you can add those in. And if you want to watch a video that shows how they're intended to be made, they also have that every month at pumpkinhowto.com. So I will be back soon and let's see what we can make out of this kit. Okay, I have made a few examples and we are going to make one together today. We are going to start by taking one of our envelopes and we're just going to line up this edge across this cutting track. You just want to cut off enough to get it open. And I find it easier to flip it over just to keep it straight and flush against the top. And repeating that on the other side. Now we can open up our envelope and we're going to put this fold line right in that gutter. Maybe just a little bit to the side because we don't want it, but we want the most out of our real estate there that we can get. You're welcome to keep this 
and do sentiments or do other things with it. I find sometimes that just the thinness of this paper, I would just prefer to use the cardstock. So I'm going to recycle mine. I'm going to spin this around and put this other fold line just a little bit past that gutter mark. You'll want to go ahead and keep this. You just want to keep in mind that that adhesive is on this part. So you have about a strip here about that. It's hard to see where that is. Um, probably from about there on you can use. I like this striped pattern because it's a different color than what the other striped patterns are in the kit. It has that Calypso coral in it and the others are mainly the rich razzleberry. We're just going to cut that to be even on that side. And then we're going to line this up at the five and a quarter mark. And as you can see, that doesn't give you a lot of excess. So we're using most of it. And I am going to just kind of look at this and see, okay, it doesn't really matter. We don't have any of that soft sea foam on the edge. I am going to line this up at the four inch mark. And you'll find the same here. This might be good for an inside portion of a card, so I wouldn't throw that away just yet. I also have another piece of an envelope that I use from another project, cutting it out the same way, and I am going to take, I want to cut it this way because I want the pattern of the stripes to go the right direction my card. So about an inch and a half of that. And I think that's all we need to cut for right now. Maybe for the rest of the card actually. I have a Calypso Coral card base. And we are just simply going to take our glue or you could use um, seal or something like that if you prefer a tape runner style. I tend to like my liquid adhesive. I will say on this thinner paper, I would go a little on the lighter side. But you just want to layer this on like we do any other first layer usually on our card. Right. Okay, then give this a little back rub with our hand on this side. I'm always needing a birthday card, and so that is what we are going to make today. These die cuts, I don't really mind because they are bright and more vibrant colors than the other one. And like I say, I just kind of felt the other ones lent itself to a more juvenile style card. Not that there's a thing wrong with that. I just don't tend to use those type of cards. So let's take one of the gifts here from our kit. That out of the way. And I am going to bring in, slide these over. This is going to glare for a minute. I apologize. I used our Stitch So Sweetly dies, and I cut out a gold layer and a white layer. We will be putting this one over top, but I wanted to, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. There are several little markings through here. That is because my cut and emboss machine needs new clear plates. I have used mine extremely heavily since getting it through the holiday season and whatnot. And so I knew that I needed new plates. And this is even with my nicer plate on the top. 
If you are using metallic cardstock or something very delicate like that, and you know that your top plate has some marring in it, you want to use some typing paper or copier paper or something and lay over the top of that before you run it through your Big Shot. And this is with mine, I even, I had a longer sheet. I even put it in my machine just to this certain point and then I backed it back out so that I didn't ruin this additional piece over here. So I want you to be able to use the most out of your cardstock and that's why I wanna mention that to you today. We're going to work with this one right now. And we are going to bring in our basic gray ink pad. If you'll notice on the back of that flyer from your paper pumpkin, it says basic gray is one of the colors that match. And we are going to use this happy birthday stamp from the many mates. And I have to kind of pull this around so that I can see it and hopefully get it centered and straight. We are going to use our watercolor pencils today. I like that. It gives a nice outline, but it isn't too dark. We are going to be using the Daffodil Delight pencil and the Calypso Coral pencil. I'm going to start on the bottom and we are going to color in our birthday. You don't want to press super hard, have big waxy marks, but you want to give it enough pressure or go back and forth a few times to get it covered. This is in particular, this birthday side is a smaller area. So you do want to make sure that you've sharpened your pencil before you start because it is really tiny. The happy is much easier. But just take your time. And you shouldn't have any problem at all. I have to admit, I love to doing my holiday cards, but I was really, really ready to work on something with some different colors. Do any of you feel that way? Let me know in the comments whether you feel that way sometimes. I love Christmas and I love making holiday cards. And even some of them were varied colors within that genre. But I was just kind of ready to do something, I don't know, just a little bit different in the color palette. All right, so there's the birthday. And I may even kind of hit a couple of those areas. But you know, even if it's kind of um, not marbled, but just a little not even, that's okay. It might even out when we do our second step to this process, or it just kind of creates a cool look. This stamp is from the Many Mates stamp set. It has a lot of really, it's an all greeting set. It has a lot of nice different greetings for both the inside and the outside of your card. And I really appreciate that when I get a stamp set that offers that to me. Our biggest event of the year is called Celebration. That will be kicking off on January. It's either the 4th or the 5th. I have to double check that with a calendar. They usually always kick things off on Tuesday. So probably whatever date a Tuesday is, is when that is. 
So if you have something that you're wanting to buy, unless you are in dire need of it, I would not order it just yet. I am going to use this small end of our blender pen and I'm just going to clean it off before I start. And we are just going to take it and it doesn't, it wets it, but it's not like sopping wet. It just kind of wets it enough that it blends it. I guess that would be why they call it the blender pen. Although it's actually more like a marker. Okay, and then you want, I have this piece of just folded up typing paper here that I'm going over there and just taking it back and forth on that a few times before we go into this yellow in particular, because a yellow is like one of the lightest shades that we have in, in our line, and it will show any other color that you have on your nib of your marker. And it doesn't take much, just a nice little drag across there. That's so fun. I want to use a bit of ribbon on our card. And while I don't have anything like an Eclipso Coral or Daffodil Delight that I wanted to use, I do have this crinkled, white crinkled seam binding. And this is a great opportunity to show you why I like it so much. It's thin. And so it's easy to work with. And here's what I want to do to our card. And it doesn't need to be exact. I'm just kind of measuring here and around about how far I want to cut. ribbon scissors and I see even this has a mark on it but I think it will cover up fine that it won't be an issue so you definitely want to protect your work surface I have this piece of copy paper I'm even going to probably fold it in here because I do have that area where there's some color on there. And we're just going to stretch it out across here. I have my Stampin' Blend, this is our alcohol marker, and I have the dark Calypso Coral. And I am taking the brush end. This is great when you don't have the right color ribbon and you have a blend, you can color that ribbon. You can color it with other ways you could use our ink refill and make a little solution and do that way. This is certainly the fastest and with the alcohol in it, it dries very quickly and you don't have to worry about it. Um, holding up your process. I, I won't say it will never transfer color um, to your hands or your project very easily. It could, so you'd want to be careful and just give it a few minutes to dry. I usually just run mine through a little Kleenex or something just to make sure that if there's any remaining residue, especially when I'm working near white, that that's taken care of. Try to do this without getting it all over my hands, but as you can see, I already have ink all over my hands from playing. So this is a, a good thing. When you don't have a lot 
to invest into your supplies. If you want to start with a basic ribbon, this is the one I would suggest out of our current line. It, it can be colored to your specs. Um, like I say, using a lot of different ways. A white ribbon is always good. A white or an ivory, like a vanilla colored so that you can match both of our basic colors. And once we, we don't know how long it's gonna take for that basic white to hit our distribution center process. So um, you might wanna be a little conservative with your white if you can be. All right. And here, like I say, this is what I do. I just take a Kleenex and just kind of run that through there. There's just a very faint marking there. The other adhesive sometimes we need to use in our craft room is simply our scotch tape. If the holiday has wiped you out of that, you can always use a glue dot or some tear and tape or something that you have on hand. We'll just start. We're going to just pick about where we want to start wrapping our ribbon. I want it to have lots of room to show its color. And I probably got way too much tape, which I did, but sometimes that just happens. And I'm gonna take it about to that second scallop, not the corner one, but the second one, full one. And you don't have to um, be super particular. It just kind of drives my OCD a little bit wild if I'm not about to where I am on the other side. So there. We're just making an X and then we'll take that last part straight across the middle. And we're going to simply adhere that down with some scotch, scotch tape and snip off that excess. I'm going to move this out of the way for just a second. I like to start and build out this way um, most of the time. This is going to be adhered down flat, and so I like to do that first. You're just going to use we're just going to use some of our liquid adhesive. Doesn't need to be globs, but this is going to be covered up so you can be a little bit more generous. The backing is a little bit different on our metallic cardstock. And this gold just kind of pops this pattern off of this paper really like it. We'll put that there to kill the glare. And I see I've got a little cat hair, a little bonus. Okay. So let's just put a dimensional in each corner and one there. And these will probably just adhere fine to this gold cardstock. But I still want to just have a little bit of that room to glide, especially when there's they're the same pattern on this cutout. I want to be able to have the ability 
to put that right where I want it to. I want to say these are the largest and then the next, the second largest sizes in that die set. I use that all the time. But I just love how that looks. It just kind of pops all of that up off the page. And I want to make sure This die cut's not very big, and I want to make sure that I don't have any hanging out. So I'm going to go ahead and put my dimensionals on this piece here instead of on the die cut. You want to be careful because that liquid glue is still going to slide for just a minute. Here we go. I am going to just pop that package right here in the center. We could be done just here, but I think that a little bit of bling brought this card really to life for me. And I am going to use something a little bit different than what I used on my first one. And we can see which one we like better. These are our gold metallic pearls. And I will even kind of put these where I place some of my other ones. Although... Yeah, I think I will. Kind of just like here up between that those two rows is where I put my other one. These are much smaller. So I will bring the other card in and you can see the difference between the two, the pearls, and then the glitter Old glitter enamel dots. I like them both. I don't know if I have a preference as to which one I like over the other better. The other piece of striped cardstock that we did in the beginning, I was just going to, I wasn't going to take the time to show you this on the inside um, to do it, but this is how I did it. I took that strip underneath here. I used our Label Me Lovely punch. I punched out the This Calls for a Huge Celebration, which is also part of that Many Mates stamp set. And then I punched one out of the Calypso Coral. And I just cut it in half and put half behind the top and half behind the bottom. And that just gives you a nice little pop of color on the inside of that card. So again, we have these two cards. This is what we did today on the video. And then let me show you some others. For the envelope, I just simply took that little um, design that was on the stamp set and did it on three sides. Our stamp, of course, will be here, so we can't do that because the post office wouldn't like us very much. Here is a Get Well Soon card took one of the card bases from the kit and one of the circles, and then I just stamped this with our stamp that was included in our box, and I added some of those gold glitter enamel dots there, and I used our pick-a-punch and did our greeting on there and just put some of those glitter dots on each side and I used that design on the inside. I probably, since it didn't have an inside greeting to go with that stamp set, I will probably just write a note. I'll use this as like a note card type card. This one, I'm actually going to use one of the envelopes because they are very pretty. I took the rich raspberry and that same stamp and just accented that address portion of the envelope 
and I'll probably just put my return address back here. But I used the soft seafoam card base, and then I used this cutout of the Rich Razzleberry. This I used from, I think it's called Peaceful Moment, Poppy Moment. It's from the Poppy set that we had. Um, I think that you can still get this die set. If you don't have this die set, it has some very nice label dies if you are wanting nice shapes to put some sentiments on. I used our gold embossing powder and, shape, and embossed the word hooray on it and used one of our cupcakes out of our kit. And then I used some of the gilded gems that I had left over from Christmas and put on there because I just thought it brought that gold out a little bit and warmed it up. And again, there's no inside greeting, so I will just write my own. And actually, this could be not just a birthday, this could be um, you got a new job, you got a scholarship, you're getting married, any of those things that are joyous occasions would be great to send this card. And this last one, um, I went ahead and did the same thing with the envelope. And then I used a Calypso Coral card base again. I took some of our gold and I embossed it with our Dainty Diamonds embossing folder. I used one of our vellum squares. And just remember that you can only put your heat adhesive behind here to hold that down. And then I took one of the sentiments from our, uh, the circles from our kit and put my sentiment on there and I popped it up with some of the um, dimensionals and I didn't actually take time. I have to do that yet and finish this one, but I will probably just put some design on the inside and use this as a note card as well. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you can see that even though this kit was not my favorite, it wasn't unsalvageable. I have many, many more supplies to use and I can just take them. I can either use the stamp set that came with the kit. I can sub in a different one, but um, you can bring in designer series paper that matches. The how-to video link that I told you about is great to go and see how to make the cards as they were intended to be made. The other link I could never get to work. So simply go to thepolka.life.com and click on the shop tab. That will take you to my website. There you can just search by color and it will bring up, if you put Calypso Coral in there, it's going to bring up everything that has Calypso Coral in it. Um, our designer series papers, our, oh, you know, do we have a alcohol marker in that? Do we have a stamp and write marker in that? Do we have color pencil in that? Um, do we have ribbon in that? All of those things you can search by color on that area and you can then just pull in something that you might have in your stash. Or you can see maybe what products you would like to put on your wish list next. As always, remember to be kind, send a card, and do something creative. Bye-bye.